Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and today we will understand different types of hosts. For example, we will understand definitive hosts, we will understand intermediate hosts, we will understand paratonic, reservoir hosts, etc. And we will also understand how the parasite it interacts with the host with certain examples. So I hope that this video is going to help you to understand types of hosts in parasitology in more detail. Before we dive into the main content, a huge shout out to our sponsors, Consensus, for supporting the channel so that we can bring amazing content to you. If you want to access the premium pack of Consensus, you can use the discount code available in the description box. And for those who are not familiar with Consensus, here is a quick snapshot of what Consensus is. Meet Consensus, the intelligent way to search for scientific research. Type in a question and let Consensus instantly sort and summarize trusted research findings all in one place. No more endless scrolling with Consensus, you find what you need fast, clear and verified. Compare studies effortlessly, Consensus allows you to analyze research from various sources side by side, helping you to make informed decisions quickly. Personalize your research experience, create profiles that save your preferences, making it easier to access your most relevant topics. Collaborate seamlessly, share your findings with colleagues and collaborate in real time ensuring everyone is on the same page. Get consensus today and simplify your research journey. Understanding the various types of hosts is essential for understanding the complexities of parasitic infections as well as their impact on health. Here, we will explore the different classifications of hosts and provide detailed explanation with examples for each type. Definitive hosts. Definitive hosts are those in which a parasite reaches maturity and if possible reproduces sexually. Mosquitoes, they serve as definitive hosts for Plasmodium species, the causative agents of malaria. The parasite completes its sexual reproduction cycle in mosquitoes. Second example is dogs for Echinococcus granulosus. In the case of tapeworm, Echinococcus granulosus, dogs are the definitive hosts, where the adult worm live and reproduce inside the intestine. Intermediate hosts. Intermediate hosts are those in which a parasite undergoes development but does not reach maturity. These hosts are crucial for parasites life cycle. Examples, snails act as intermediate hosts for cystosoma species where the larva develop before infecting humans. Second example is humans for plasmodium species. In the life cycle of plasmodium, humans are intermediate hosts as the parasite develop within them before being transmitted to mosquitoes. Paratinic hosts carry the parasite to another host without a parasite undergoing any development. These hosts help bridge the gap in the parasite's life cycle. Example, rodents for Toxocara canis. Rodents can act as paratonic hosts for the dog roundworm Toxocara canis. The larvae reside in the rodent's tissue until they are eaten by the definitive host, typically a dog. Second example is bird for Elaria species. Birds may serve as paratonic hosts for the parasite. Host carrying the immature parasite until they are consumed by the definitive host, usually a mammal. Reservoir hosts harbor parasite and act as source of infection for other susceptible hosts. They can maintain the parasite's life cycle in the environment. Example is wild mammals for Trypanosoma cruzi. Various wild mammals act as reservoir hosts for Trypanosoma cruzi, the causative agent of Chagas disease ensuring its persistence in the nature. Another example is dogs for Leishmania species. Dogs are significant reservoir hosts for Leishmania species which can cause Leishmaniasis maintaining the parasite in endemic areas. Accidental hosts are those in which a parasite is not normally found. These hosts are not typically involved in parasites life cycle and often experience atypical or dead end infections. Example is humans for Toxocara canis. Humans can become accidental hosts for Toxocara canis, leading to toxocariasis, a condition that can cause serious health issues such as vision problems. Second example is humans for Echinococcus granulosus. While Echinococcus granulosus typically infects canines, humans can become accidental hosts, resulting in hydrated diseases. Aberrant hosts are those in which a parasite infects an unusual location or unusual host species leading to severe or atypical symptoms. Example includes humans for Echinococcus granulosus. 
Ingesting echinococcus granulosus eggs can lead to humans developing hydrated cysts in atypical locations such as the brain or bones. Second example is humans for angiostrongylus cantonensis. This rat lungworm usually infects rats but can cause severe neurological symptoms in humans who became a brint host. Hosts exhibit a wide range of relationships with parasites, from acting as definitive environments for maturation to being accidental victims of infection. Recognizing these classifications aids in diagnosing, treating and preventing parasitic diseases. Alright, if you found this information helpful, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Your support enables us to continue providing educational content. Thank you very much for watching.